All right, so the first problem is a trust problem. So you're going to learn how to uh, analyze trusses by uh, joint methods and points. So um, this is the problem. There's three members. There's one, two, three members. And I'll label them. This is B. The book calls this A. And this is C. All right, and they want to know the forces in each member. <clears throat> OK. So what you want to do whenever you have a trust problem, you want to determine the forces maybe first at the reactions at A and C, and then you can get um, what's happening in this force, whether it's in compression or tension, this member, whether it's compression or tension, and the same with this member. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram of this whole thing. <clears throat> All right, so the free body, I'll just draw it as like a stick. So it's like this, this. This. You got this. So you got this triangle. What reaction do you expect to see? All right. Well, there's also a force over here. This was given in the problem. It's 84 kilonewtons. So what? Uh, what reaction do you expect at C and A? There's roller elements, so there's obviously so just going to be one force. Yeah. So yeah, there's going to be force in this direction. What about A? Uh, there's going to be a force in this direction, FA, okay? Because it has to pose up C. <laughs> there's also a horizontal force also, so I'll call this FAX and FAY. I almost forgot the Y thing. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to want, obviously we could determine either FAX or F. Uh, C by summing the moments at either point. I'm going to sum the moments at A, so I'm going to solve for FC. So if I sum the moments at A to be zero, taking counterclockwise to be positive, let me put the dimensions here. This dimension from here to here is 5.25 meters, and this dimension from here to here is 3 meters. And also, you need the dimension from here. Well, we have that three. That's the only dimension you need. OK. All right. So um, you have 5.25 meters multiplied by FC. And this is minus because it's going clockwise. And then you also have uh, 3 times 84. And that's positive because it's going counterclockwise. 3 meters times 84 kilonewtons. Is equal to zero. All right, so we want to solve for FC. We know everything else. So we could get FC is equal to um, 48 kilonewtons. <coughs> All right, so now that we have FC, how can we solve for uh, FAX? You just scream it out. You know? Uh. You just sum the forces in the x direction. So sum the forces in the x direction to be 0, taking the right to be positive. You have minus Fc plus Fax is equal to 0. So Fax is equal to Fc, which is also equal to 48 kilonewtons. <laughs> OK, that's great. So we got that. So what, what do you think Fay is? You also have to sum the forces in the y direction to solve for Fay. So sum the forces in the uh, y direction to be 0, taking upwards to be positive. You have FAY minus 84 is equal to 0. So FAY is equal to 84 kilo, kilonewtons. <clears throat> so we got the reactions, right? And they want to know the forces in this member, in this member, and in this member. So we're going to have to use a uh, um, method of joints. So we have to draw a free body diagram of each joint to determine the forces on the members. Because these are two force members. <laughs> so we don't need this anymore. Oh, we do need that. OK, so we're going to have to determine angles from, from this diagram. But I'll just copy these dimensions onto the free body diagram. This distance was. 4 meters, and this distance over here is 1.25 meters. OK. Um, all right, so let's first analyze this joint over here. 
So we're going to draw a free body diagram of C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Where should I draw it? It's sharp. Okay, so now that we saw for FC, we know FC is uh, 48 kilonewtons. And we know FAX is... Uh, 48 kilonewtons, and this is equal to 84 kilonewtons. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to draw a free body diagram of joint C. That's this joint over here. So it looks like this. This is a pin or the joint, and there's a force FC, which is equal to 48 kilonewtons. Right, and these these members are two force members. What two force members means? The force acts along the member. So the member could only be in tension or compression. So, um, all right. So if FC is to the left, what direction do you think this force is going to be? This is uh, what was this? B, B A, and this is C. All right, so which direction do you think this force, BC, is going to be? Is it going to be this way or this way? Do <sighs> you guys have any idea? Um, obviously, this, this force is going to be vertically. It's going to be up or down. But um, since this force is to the left, we, we know automatically this force has to be into the joint. Do you guys see? Because this component has to, this x component of this force has to balance out this component because this is going to the left so this therefore this has to go to the right you guys see that okay so I'll call this F B C and um, since this is going downwards so the Y component is downwards therefore this force has to be upwards okay so this is F C A it doesn't matter what you label them you could label them anything you like all right that's just my notation all right so we're going to have to find this angle over here, theta. That's this angle over here, theta. <laughs> All right, so what's theta? You guys tell me. You have the dimensions right here. Tan theta is equal to what? 4 thirds, right? So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 4 thirds. So that's equal to 53.1 degrees. <laughs> okay, so now that we have that, um, so we know this, we know this angle, right? What could we do uh, for this? What what type of force balance could we do to solve for F uh, B C? Sum of forces in the x direction or y? To solve for F, B, C. You know this. Y. Huh? Y. Wait, no. Well, I guess you could do x because you know. X, exactly, yeah. Summing the forces in the x direction will give you F, B, C. Summing the forces in the x direction to be zero, taking the right to be positive. You have F, B, C cosine of theta. That's to the right, and then you have minus FC is equal to zero. So we know FC, so we could solve for FBC. So FBC is uh, FC over cosine theta, and you know uh, theta is 53.1 degrees. So this is equal to 48 kilonewtons all over cosine of 53.1 <coughs> degrees. Okay, so FBC is equal to 79.9 kilonewtons. <clears throat> okay, so we found one of the forces in the member, right? So what does this member look like? We drew, the, we drew the joint, so what would the free body diagram of this look like, this member right over here? We just drew it separately. Remember, it's a two force member. So this is the, this is the member, this is uh, B, and this is C, right? And we drew the force going into the joint, so that, there has to be an equal and opposite reaction from the joint to the member. So this has to be in compression. Do you guys see that? Right? You have the joint over here, and the joint is 
it's pushing this way, so this has to push in the opposite direction with equal magnitude. So this is FBC, and this is FBC. Okay, and that's equal to 79.9 kilonewtons. So is this member in compression or tension? Compression. It's in compression, yeah. So you just denote that right in compression. Okay, so that's one of the answers right over here. <clears throat> okay, so we solve for we solve for this member. Now, how could we solve for this member? We could still use this free body diagram and we could get the forces in this member. So how do you do that? Uh, forces in the Y. Exactly, yes, on the forces. There, there's no other choice left, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, there's no other option. That's the only other option. Yeah, so you want to sum the force in the y direction. So if you sum the force in the y direction to be zero, taking upwards to be positive using this free body diagram, you have uh, FCA, and then you have minus FBC uh, sine of theta is equal to zero. All right, and you want to solve for FCA, because we already solved for this. So FCA is equal to FBC sine of uh, 53.1 degrees. Okay, so FCA is equal to, uh, oh sorry, this is equal to 79.9 kilonewtons, which we saw for before. So the value you get is 63.9 uh, kilonewtons, right? And if we draw a free body diagram of this member, it's gonna look like this, right? So that means it's in tension. So this is FCA, FCA, and it's equal to 63.9 kilonewtons. Okay. So this is in tension. Okay, so we only have one more member left to solve for, is this member over here. <laughs> so what are we going to do next? How are we going to solve for that? When you're doing truss analysis, there's, there's no moment balance. There's no sub the, only, the only moment balance you're going to do is in the beginning to solve for reactions. The rest is just summing the forces in the x or in the y direction. And you're drawing free body diagrams of each individual joint. So if you want to solve for this, this member over here, you could either draw a free body diagram of B or A. Either one. I would draw B because there's less forces. It doesn't really matter. It, it really doesn't matter. Either one's going to give you the right answer. So, um, you guys got this? I'm just going to do it right now. <clears throat> so the whole point of this chapter is be lazy and pick the easiest way out. Because that's engineering. No, I'm kidding. It's not. Engineering is pretty tough. But We'll still use I'm lazy. I'm lazy, so I, I and I'm. I'll use uh. This is what uh Professor Longton he always says uh I'm lazy and I'm I'm an opportunist. So I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of joint B because it's easier. All right. So free body diagram of joint B. Okay. So B looks like this, right? There's obviously there's a force over here, and it's 84 kilonewtons. Uh, so we drew, remember in the previous free body diagram, this, was, this force was going into the joint, right? So this also has to go into the joint. So this force, we know what this force is already. This is uh, F, F, we call this FBC, and that was equal to, I erased it, didn't I? So this is equal to 79.9 kilonewtons, and uh, we know this angle, okay, that's theta. So this angle over here is theta. Maybe I should draw that. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, all right. So if this is going in, like it's going like to the left and up. Uh, so which which direction should this force be? Obviously, it has to be along this member B B A. But is it going into the joint or out of the joint? 
<clears throat> what do you think? Do you know? No? Well, think about it. What's this x component? Is it going to the left or to the right of FBC? It's going to the left. Okay. So what, which direction does this have to be? To the right. Exactly, up and to the right. So it's this way. So this is uh, FBA. Exactly. All right, so we have to determine this angle, too, because we don't know it. I'll call that alpha. So this is alpha over here. Okay, so what's alpha? So tangent alpha is equal to what? 1.2 over 3? Yeah, 1.25. Yeah, you're right. It's, yeah, it's this distance over opposite over adjacent. So it's 1.25 over 3. That's correct. All right, so alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of uh, 1.25 over 3. So alpha is equal to... It's equal to 22.6 degrees. <clears throat> okay, so we got the angle. So we got everything, all right? So this is the only force that's unknown. So what do you want to do? Sum the forces in the x direction or y? Either one's going to give you the answer, so it doesn't matter. Sum the forces. Sum the forces in the y direction. Who cares? All right. Um, we know this, so I can remiss this. Alright, so if you sum the forces in the y direction to be 0, taking the upwards direction to be positive, you have F, B, A times what? Times what? You get a shout out. Anyone? It's this component. Huh? Oh, cosine? It's, no, we're summing the forces in the y direction right now. Oh, the y direction. So sine. Yeah, so it's FBA sine of alpha minus 84 <coughs> is equal to zero. Okay? Oh, we forgot something. This also has a y component. So what is that? It's plus. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's uh, 79. Well, I'll, I'll leave it in terms of the variable. So it's F, B, C times the sine of theta. Yeah, okay, I like that. Okay, it's equal to zero. Um, all right, so we know this. This is equal to 79.9, and this is equal to 53.1, the degree, uh, the angle. This is equal to 22.6, and uh, what are we looking for again? We're looking for this, so we know everything else. So that was actually stupid. You know why? Because I could have just summed the forces in the x direction, and it would be even easier. So th this has three components. If you sum the forces in the x direction, you only have two, right? So if you would sum the forces, either you're, you're going to see. You could check me on this. Summing the forces in the x direction to be 0, taking the right to be positive, you have F, B, A, cosine of alpha minus F, B, C, uh, cosine of theta is equal to zero, right? And we know this value, we know everything. So this is much easier than this, but they're, they're the same. So if you solve for this in either one, you're going to get the same answer. So F, B, A is equal to, where is it? Oh, it's over here. It's equal to 52 kilonewtons. <laughs> okay, so, so what's a free body diagram look like of this member? This is a member, this is B, B, C. So what is the force? Is it in compression or tension? Based on this free body diagram we drew from the joint. It has to be equal and opposite, exactly, it's in tension. So this is F, B, A, F, B, A. Okay. Congratulations, this is the whole chapter. There's no no variation. They just the, the trusses just get more complex after this problem.
Okay, so this is equal to uh, 52 kilonewtons. 52 kilonewtons. All right, so it's 52 kilonewtons in tension. Okay, so you solve for all the forces in each member. So I'm going to do one more trust problem, and then we got a distributed load problem from uh, last homework. I, I didn't go over that, so I figured I owe you guys that. <coughs> Quick question, Any, Mike. Yeah. With the direction of tension and compression, other than just looking at it and kind of intuitively deciding if it's in tension or compression? If you get a negative value, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mean it's in the opposite direction. So you, is that your question you're going to yeah. ask? Yeah, okay. So, uh, okay. So let's say you drew, let's say you drew this like this, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get a negative value. So you're going to get, uh, you're going to get minus, right? So that indicates it's in the opposite direction, but it's still going to be in tension. You see? Because if you draw this in this direction, you're going to draw this, right? You're going to draw this membrane compression, right? But remember, the, the magnitude's negative, so you have to flip this around. Either way you look at it, it's going to be in tension no matter what. Do you understand? Gotcha. So, get it. so you could either look at it from the free body diagram's uh, point of view. So if you get a negative value here, this means it's flipped. So it's actually like this, which will indicate it's in tension. Or you could just flip it over here. It doesn't really matter. So if you have a point and the arrow is pointing out, uh -huh. that's indicating... If it's pointing out, that indicates it's in what? Tension. Tension, exactly. So if you, if you want to memorize it, a lot of people memorize it. Okay, I have the point. If it's going out, it's in tension. If it's coming in, it's in compression. That's all you need to know. If you want to memorize. But I would, I would, I'd like you guys to understand what's happening. That's why I actually drew the members out. Instead of just saying, oh, it's in it's like tension or compression. Like saying you have a point and something's pulling on it. On that point. So yeah, what you have right here, what you have right here, you're analyzing like uh, you're analyzing point B, right? So we drew this this uh, this joint of B, and we we this this arrow is uh, indicating the force on the pin, and it's this way, right? So um, and then there's a force from this member which is in, and then there's a force. This was already given. So this was 84, <laughs> right? So um, what this indicates is, is that this pin is, is exerting a force in this direction. So on this member, if you cut everything out, this force has to be equal and opposite. You understand? So a joint is actually like a pin. Just like like this. This is this is why I brought it because when we got to chapter six, I wanted to show you this is a truss. So this would be the pin. This is what we're drawing a free body diagram of. <clears throat> Maybe I should take a video of this. This is a truss. Right over here. Oh, I shouldn't get your face in it. <laughs> okay, this is a truss. Okay, let's go back to the lecture. I'll cut your face out. Huh? Did you get to reset it? I don't know. Yeah, just, just make sure. You're like 25 minutes in. It's still recording. You want to sit it's in still recording. Yeah, it no, it's all for good. Okay. Yeah, just keep checking. Yeah, it's a 24, so... Six start or reset it from this point. I don't know. I don't know if it's just gonna. I, I might reset it and it'll just stop anyways. I, I'm not sure. So I'll just wait for it to stop and then I'll hit record. Or you got you guys hit record actually. So just someone keep checking it. Did you start exactly at four o'clock? I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the second problem.
See, this is the only variation. They just get more complicated. So you have to find more forces. Okay. All right, so they give you this truss that's loaded like this. It's three kilonewtons. It's six kilonewtons. <laughs> and they give you these dimensions. This is 1.2 meters, 1.2 meters, and this distance from here to here is 0 0.9 meters. <laughs> and it says uh, determine the forces in each member. Okay, so it's the same thing. All right, so you want to draw a free body diagram of this truss. Uh, let me label the points. This is C, D, E, A, and B. Okay. So if you wanna if you wanna find the members in each uh, the member well, you wanna find the force in each member, which which joint would you start with? Would you draw a free body diagram of the whole thing, find the reactions, or would you just start off uh, making a free body diagram of one of these joints? There's a quick way of doing it, and there's a long way. What's the first option you said? Oh, uh, like I saw previously. Uh, doing a free body diagram of this whole thing and then finding the reactions at A and C. Or you could draw a free body diagram directly of one of the joints and start solving for the forces of the member. What do you think? One of the joints. Yeah, one of the joints. Which one is it? B. B? No. C. B B is the most complicated. There's a lot of forces on this. You're not going to... I mean, all that B. Yeah, you're not going to be able to solve for B directly. C. C? E. C? E. No, no C's not. Forced. It's E. Who said E? You're it's right. E. Why? Why? Uh, because there's only like one tension coming down and they give you the force. Uh huh. The, the, yeah, they give you. Oh, this is, a, this is a load. It's loaded here. But w why is it? Because if. Let's draw a free body diagram and then I'll let you guys answer. Alright, so if you draw three. Body diagram of this of joint E. So if you draw a free body diagram of joint E, you have the joint over here. They give you this as three kilonewtons, right? So um, this is downwards. So what direction do you think this force is? Uh, I'll call it F E B. Going to be going upwards. Exactly. Yes. All right. So this is F, E, B, okay. And which direction is this force in now? This member, um, this member D, E. It's going to the right or to the left? To the right. To the right, exactly. You guys got this. F, D, E, okay. Um, so you, obviously you're going to need the angle. So you're going to need this angle over here. I'll call it theta. So we're going to solve for that tangent. Theta is equal to opposite, which is 0 0.9, over adjacent, which is 1.2. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 0 0.9 over 1.2. And that's equal to uh, 36.9 degrees. Check the camera every few seconds to make sure it's still rolling. OK. Um, all right, so we got this angle. This is theta. So if we want to get F, E, B, what do we have to do? Some of the forces in the X direction are Y. Exactly. Some of the forces in the Y direction to be zero, taking the upwards to be positive. Okay, so you have F, E, B, uh, sine, theta, minus 3 is equal to zero. So F, E, B is equal to 3 over the sine, and theta is 30. 6.9 degrees. So uh, F E B is equal then tension uh, or compression. I don't really have to draw it since I drew the other ones. So is this in tension or compression? <coughs> it's in tension, yes. Tension. Oops. Okay, good. That's one of your answers. Okay, how are we going to get our other answer. This is another answer. We're going to have to find the forces in each number. So how are we going to get F, D, E? Some of the forces in the max direction, yes. 
Okay, sum of forces in the x direction. I just want to make sure you guys are paying attention. Okay, so you have FDE minus FEB times the cosine of theta is equal to zero. So FDE is equal to FEB times the cosine of theta, and we know the cosine of theta, well, we know theta is equal to 36.9 degrees, and we know uh, FED is equal to five kilonewtons. So the force you get for DE is equal to four kilonewtons. Oops. Okay, so is this intention or compression? Compression. Compression, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I restarted. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, okay, perfect. All right, so we got these. Now I'm going to erase it because we're going to have to find other forces. You guys got this? Okay. Okay, so now we want to draw three. So we know these forces. Now, which one are we going to pick? Exactly. Right. Good choice. Because if we pick this, we're not going to know this or this. There's going to be too many unknowns. What about C? So C. Well, you're not. You're not going to be able to solve for that, unless you. Unless in the beginning you did a, uh, the global free body diagram and you found the reaction at C then you could find what uh, the forces in CD. You understand? You have to sum the moments over here, find out what FC is going to be, and then you can find out what this is, because it's just going to be a force balance in the x direction. Okay. <clears throat> so, with that in mind, do you guys understand why he said B? Because if you pick this, you're going to have this force in this direction, in this direction, and then you're going to have this force maybe in this direction. Well, we drew this See, that's why I shouldn't erase things. This was down, this was up, like, and to the left, and this one was to the right, okay? So yeah, this would be to the right, this would be to the left, uh, sorry, to the left, this would be to the right, and then this would be, well, we'll, we'll get there, but you're gonna have too many unknowns here, so you're not gonna be able to solve for this or this. But if you draw a free body diagram of this uh, joint B, you're going to be able to solve for uh, this force over here, DB, and also uh, BA. Okay, so let's draw that joint, B. So you have this, this is 6 kilonewtons. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is in this direction, equal and opposite. Uh -huh. So this was uh, FEB, we called it. What was the value for that? FEB was 5 kilonewtons. Okay, so this was 5 kilonewtons. And then we have, so this is down and to the right. Then this must be up, right? And which direction should this force be? <coughs> Do you guys know? Which one? The one that oh, this this member over here. That would be in tension, so it would be going to the left. Exactly, yeah. This force is to the left. F, B, A. Okay. So we determine this angle. So this is theta. So this also is theta. Okay, so we got everything. Um, oh, and I should label this force. This is F, D, B. It doesn't really matter what you leave it. Okay, so now. Um, what do you want to find first? DB. Huh? DB. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's a good choice. So you want to sum the forces in the y direction. Okay? So taking upwards to be positive. You have FDB minus 6 minus FEB 
uh, sine of theta. And theta is the same value. Theta is equal to uh, 36.9 degrees, right? Because alternate interior angles, you got this thing going on, the z. You have theta here and theta here. Okay. So, um, right. So we know this is 5, 5 kilonewtons, and we know this angle. So we could solve for F D B. Just substitute those values and I'll just give you the answer. F D B. Where is that? I hate finding my answers. I can never find them. I found it. Okay. It's equal to nine kilonewtons. Okay? Um now is uh is this intention or compression? Compression, exactly. Okay. There you go. Okay, so you found that force. Now you want to find force, this is the only other unknown, so you want to find that force FBA. So, <coughs> I'll do it right on the key. So what are we going to do? We're going to sum the forces in the x direction to be zero, taking the right to be positive. Now, instead of me telling you, I'll let you guys try. What do you have? You have 5 cosine 36.9. Just, just, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just, or FEB just, yeah, cosine exactly, theta. exactly. So what do you have? FEB cosine theta minus FBA. Exactly, minus FBA is equal to zero, right? Okay, that's the only forces in the x direction. So you want to solve for FBA, so FBA is equal to FEB cosine of theta, okay? So you know this is five and this is 36.9, so you could get uh, FBA is equal to four kilonewtons, okay? And now, is that intention or compression? Tension. Exactly. Right. Okay. So we got that force. So, all right, so let's check it off. We got this force, this force, this one, this one. So now, we're going to obviously we need this one and this one. So where would you sum the, I mean, where would you draw a free body diagram? There's only one other option. D. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's do that. All right. So free body diagram of joy. Uh, joint D. Okay. So, all right, this is D. And what do we know about D? I keep erasing this and I need it. This is down, this way, and this one is to the right. Okay, so this force, this was F, uh, E, no, I called it F, D, E. It doesn't really matter. F, D, E. Okay, so this is uh, F, E, E, and we have the value for that. Okay, so this is four, we saw that this is four kilonewtons. Uh, okay, and um, all right, so we know that's to the left. We also solved for this one, right? Should have kept all the free body diagrams. All right, so the free body diagram of this one was what? This one was this way. Uh, this was down. This was up. And this one was to the left, right? We have that. This is a B. This. Okay. So that means that means over here it has to be equal and opposite. So I call this F. I call this F uh, D B. Okay, so this is F 
db, and we know that value, what was that? Nine. Nine, yeah. Nine kilonewtons. And, um, okay. And these are unknown, good. So which directions do you think they're going to be? Uh, <clears throat> well, let me say that AD is in tension. AD is in tension. Good. So it's this way, right? Yeah. Correct. You're right. So this is FDA. <clears throat> so which direction is uh, the force FCD? Uh, Compression. It's, yeah, exactly. To the right. So this is FCD. <clears throat> okay, so nice. We got the free body diagram and we're looking for this and this. So, um, what do you want to do first? X components. Y. No, X. Y? I don't know. So I like doing the summing the X first. Okay, so if, if you sum the forces in the X direction, you're going to have two unknowns, right? Yeah. This is unknown. And this is unknown. So let's do y. So let's do y. That's a good answer, yeah. <laughs> do you see that now, right? If you sum the forces in the y direction, you're going to be able to solve for this directly. Because this is the only y component that's unknown, right? So um, let's sum the forces in the y direction to be 0, taking off where it's to be positive. So you have F, D, A. Oh, and this angle is what? It's theta still, right? This angle is theta. So it's, it's the same, it's still 36, where I wrote it somewhere, I erased it. All right, so, uh, yeah, it's 36.9. Theta is equal to the inverse tangent still of 0 0.9 over 1.2. Still the same angle, so it's 36.9 degrees. Okay, um, so that's theta. All right, so let's sum the forces in the y direction. So you have FDA sine theta minus F db, um, and that's it, is equal to 0. Okay, so we know uh, this is equal to 9, so we have fda is equal to 9, well let me write it in terms of variables, so this is fdb over sine theta, and this is equal to 9 over sine of 36.9 degrees. Okay, so fda is equal to what? is it equal to? It's equal to 15 kilonewtons. And is it in tension or compression? I'll ask someone else, because I know you know. It's in tension, yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, that, that's important to know, because that, that, could, that could mean like one point on the Z. Mike, if you took that one truss and flipped it and connected B to C, then it would be in compression, right? Flipped what? A, B. You took a, I'm sorry, A, D. Uh -huh. And flipped and drew it. it this way? No, and, and took it off and then connected it to C, B. Oh, you took this off yeah. and then put it to and, you know, C, B. From the bottom to the... Oh, C, C, B. Oh, like this. Yeah. So oh, so it's like this now. Exactly. Um, then it would be compression. Okay, let's think about this. Yeah, then it has to be in compression, yeah. Then that number would be, yeah, it's not going to be pulled anymore, it's going to be pushed. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a valid point. Because you know what, you could, you could basically look at, you could look at the diagram beforehand and think about it. If you have two forces over here, you know if you're pulling on this thing over here and you're pushing on this thing here, this has to be pulled, right? So yeah, if you think about it, if you draw it over here, now this force is pushing on it this way, so this, this, uh, this member, if you drew it over here, would be compressed, you're right. Yeah, so you could just look at this, this diagram right here and think about it intuitively that these two forces are going to pull it down, so therefore if the member was over here, it's going to be smushed. Yeah, that's that's actually a good question. Okay, and um, and you guys you guys could see it, right? You have these two forces, and you're pulling this thing down. So this obviously has to be pulled, right? Okay. <clears throat>
And see, you get the same result. You're pulling it here. This is intention. This is so you, you can see uh, the, the diagonals are intention. <laughs> and this middle piece over here is going to experience compression. <sighs> All right, so where was I? I forgot. Um, or CD. Okay, so yeah, we need this, uh, FCD. All right, so now let's sum the forces in the x direction. All right, so if you sum the forces in the x direction to be zero, taking the right to be positive, you have FCD uh, minus FDE, and we know that value, and you have also minus FDA cosine of theta, that's this component, this component is to the left, and you have, that's it, that's all you have, okay? So we know this, we just solve for that. Um, wait, what am I saying? Yeah, we know this, we solved for this before. We know this also, this we just solved over here. It's 15, so this is 15, uh, this is uh, four, and we're looking for this, so we could solve directly. We know this is uh, this angle's 36.9 degrees, so we could get F, CD is equal to 16 kilonewtons. Now, is this intention or compression? Compression, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, if he asked us on the exam, the, maybe the question's worth like five points. This would be a whole point if you got that wrong. So that this is like a shame to get wrong. Something like that. That's pretty easy. Um, that's it for this problem. This is the answer. For this one. Yeah. Alright, I have one more problem. I'll do it real quick. It's from the previous homework, but uh, I didn't get to solve this with you guys last time. So I'm going to do it now. <laughs> so do you ever have to use moments to solve these trust problems? Or huh? Just, do you ever have to use the moments to solve these trust problems, or is it just forces? Well, for the previous problem, you had to sum the moments to no. find the reactions. No. You, you missed it? Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, so you're, you, no. Whenever you're drawing a free body diagram of the truss, of uh, the joint, sorry, of the joint itself, it's only a force bound, summing the forces in the x or y direction. If it's a 3D problem, then you have a z direction too. But um, you only have to sum the moments to find the reaction. So if I was drawing this whole free body diagram without disconnecting anything and just disconnecting this, this part over here, then you would have reaction forces. Then you sum the moments to find uh, one of the forces. You could either find A or, or C. And then you could work from there. <laughs> Alright, so this was a beam problem because I've seen him put it on the exams before, so I'm going to just do it with you guys since I didn't get to do it last class. So there's a distributed load on the beam. Okay, so they give you the, the minimum load over here. This is uh, 120 pounds time, uh, per foot. And this is, the maximum is 150 pounds per foot. Okay, so this distance over here they give you is 9, nine feet. So you have uh, the total length of the beam is 9 feet. 
and they're asking to find um, the location of the resultant force and obviously the resultant force. And then in the second part, they're asking for the reactions at A and B. Okay, so since you have this distributed load, you could break this distributed load up into two loads, distributed loads. Something you know, all right, so you can see that you, if you cut it over here, what are you gonna have? You're gonna have a triangle and you're gonna have underneath it a rectangle, right? So you wanna find those forces. So how are we gonna find those forces if we break them up? Okay, so we know what's the area of a rectangle? It's just length times the height, right? So if we wanted the force from the rectangle, I'll call the force from the rectangle uh, F1, doesn't matter. And the force from the triangle, I'll call that F2, right? So what's gonna be the force from the rectangle, rectangular part? Okay, so the distributed load is 120 pounds per foot, right? So what do you have to multiply it to get the force? What, what distance do you have to multiply it by to get the force? Nine. Just the length of the beam. Yeah, so <coughs> nine feet. Okay, so that's a total force from this rectangle. I call this part one and this part two. There's a dashed line over here. Okay. <coughs> So for F1, okay, that's good. So what's the area of a triangle, right? It's one half times uh, one half times the base times the height. So what's the base in this uh, problem? Nine, yeah, so nine feet multiplied by the height. Be careful. What's the height? 150 minus 120. Exactly, yes, this is it. So it's 30. Pounds. That's correct. Okay. So yeah, it's there. It's one fifty. Maybe I should just write it out so you guys. One fifty uh, minus is pounds per foot minus one twenty pounds per foot. Okay. So uh, the numbers you get for this is. Oh, I mix them up. Okay, so this is, okay, I, I labeled them differently in my notes. This is uh, 1,080 pounds, and this force is 135 pounds. <coughs> okay, so now, now we're, we want to know the location of these forces. So how are we going to get the location of these forces? Let's draw a free body diagram first to see what this looks like, what we got so far. So we got this beam, right? So there's gonna be a reaction at A, there's gonna be a reaction at B. So I'll call this FA, FB, and we found F1 and F2. Okay, so where would this, where would this force be located? It's a rectangle. So so, what, in the center, exactly, yeah. So it's over here. This is F1. All right, this distance is nine. <laughs> so the location of F1 is nine divided by two, which is 4.5 feet, right? So oh, this is equal to 1,080 pounds. Okay, so what about F2? Where would it be? Do you remember for, uh, for the centroid of a uh, uh, triangle? It'd be, it'd be like that a third, yeah, a third of the length. Exactly, exactly, good. So it's nine divided by three, so it's three. So it's this distance over here. From the three feet. From, from, yeah, from the height side, yeah, from over here. So it's, it's always measured, it's always like at, uh, B over three. So it's this length over here. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, in this case, we call B nine, so I'll write it B over three, so it's nine over three, so it's equal to three feet. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the force is over here, and it's downwards. This is F2, and that's equal to 135 pounds. Right? And we want to find we want to find the location of the total force, the resultant force of these two. Obviously, they're both acting in the y direction, so the resultant force is just the sum of this one plus this one, right? That's the resultant force. But we want to know where it's located. 
Where can we put the net force on this beam? Do you guys know? You could use you could use